Annie Cohen, more famously known as Annie Londonderry, was born in 1870 into a Jewish family in Riga, Latvia. Her parents were Levi and Basha Cohen. She also had two older siblings and would later have a much younger brother and sister. When she was just five years old, she moved with her family to the United States, settling in Boston, Massachusetts. Then in 1887, unfortunately, both of her parents passed away, first her father in January and then her mother just two months later. Annie's older sister was already married and living in Maine. Because of this, it was up to her and her 20 year old brother to take care of the younger brother and sister, who were around 10 and 9 respectively. In 1888, Annie married Simon Kopchowski, known simply as Max. He was a devout Jew who worked as a peddler, selling small goods from place to place. Meanwhile, Annie worked by selling advertising space for Boston newspapers, hoping to eventually become a journalist. Together, they lived in Annie's family home, along with her siblings. Over the next four years, the couple went on to have three children. In 1894, an unexpected opportunity came Annie's way. Supposedly, she was selected to cycle around the globe. The tale states that two wealthy clubmen of Boston allegedly wagered tens of thousands of dollars that no woman could make her way around the world by bicycle in 15 months or less and earn $5,000 while en route. This is equivalent to about $150,000 today. Of all the potential candidates, Annie Chopkowski was a very unlikely choice. Firstly, she had virtually no cycling experience, as she had only ridden a bicycle until a few days prior to her trip. Furthermore, she was a petite woman, weighing about 100 pounds and measuring at only 5 foot 3 inches. Finally, she was married and a mother of three. All of these factors make us ask, why her? Well, the details of the bet have been lost in time, and it's likely that this wager was a complete fabrication. It's thought that Annie created this tale in order to sensationalize her trip. Just seven years prior, a man called Thomas Stevens became the first person to circle the globe on a bicycle. By the 1890s, the sale of bicycles skyrocketed. They provided a useful method of transportation and were especially popular among women, as it gave them more freedom. Furthermore, the bicycle led to a change in women's fashion. To make riding more practical, many stopped wearing full skirts, preferring to use bloomers. It should be stated that the bicycle was tied to the early feminist movement. The non suffragist Susan B. Anthony once said, Let me tell you what I think of the bicycle. I think it has done more to emancipate women than anything else in the world. I stand and rejoice every time I see a woman ride by on a wheel. Before the start of her journey, Annie was delivered a bicycle made by Pope Manufacturing Company. They were the owners of Columbia Bicycles, which sold a variety of models, including the bicycle Annie would use for her journey. If anyone were to benefit from her journey, it was the owner of the company, Albert Pope. So, perhaps Albert Pope played a part in Annie's motives for the huge journey that she was about to undertake. Yet, the true motive for Annie's trip was simply that it would allow her to escape from her typical life and the constant expectations that the Victorian era had on women. Although the topic of women cyclists was controversial, she was happy to become the movement's poster girl. Her first sponsor was Londonderry Lithia Springwater Company. They paid her $100 for a placard to be attached to the rear wheel of her bike and also asked that she take the name of their brand for the entire duration of the trip. From that point onwards, she became known as Annie Londonderry. On the 25th of June, 1894, it was a sunny morning in Boston. Around 500 people gathered around the steps of the Massachusetts State House, anticipating the start of her epic journey. At about 11 o'clock, she set off with only her bike, a change of clothes, 
and a pearl-handled pistol. Londonderry headed west. To determine her path, she followed cycling routes, published in tour books. These were very helpful, as they contained all sorts of practical advice, such as distances, road conditions, and even restaurants and hotels, which offered cyclists discounts. Yet, her pace was quite slow. When conditions were good, she only averaged about 8 to 10 miles per day. In mid-September, she finally made it to Chicago, but reportedly, she was already considering giving up. This was in large part due to the snowy conditions of winter, making her intended route unpassable. Before she went home to Boston, she met with the company Sterling Cycle Works. Not only did they give her a new bike, but they even offered to sponsor her trip. Up until that point, Londonderry had been using a heavy 42 pound bike. The Columbia's woman bike had a single gear and no freewheeling mechanism. This was a problem because the pedals spun with the wheels, meaning if she were going downhill, her dress would sometimes get caught on the pedals, making her crash to the ground. Despite her new roadster bike being similar in many ways, it weighed around half of her previous bicycle. Londonderry also ditched her long skirt, which was considered the ideal dress for Victorian women, and started wearing bloomers to make riding easier. Eventually, she even started wearing a men's riding suit. This form of dress sparked harsh criticisms. Many considered it extremely inappropriate, and some even started to say that she was no woman at all. But Londonderry wasn't fazed by this and took pleasure in seeing the commotion that she had caused. Following this, Londonderry was now determined to complete what she had set out to accomplish. She eventually made her way to New York City, where she boarded a French ocean liner. After nine days at sea, she arrived in Le Havre, France, on the 3rd of December. Unfortunately, she had problems at customs. Her bike and money were confiscated by French officials, and she was even insulted in the press. However, Londonderry was soon on her way, and with a change of fortune. After arriving in Paris, she cycled south to Marseille. As she made her way through France, her fame started to grow. By taking a few trains some of the way, she arrived in only two weeks. Once there, large crowds gathered to get a glimpse of the renowned woman cycling the world. Londonderry left Marseille on the steamship Sydney, making her way to Alexandria in Egypt. The apparent wager never mentioned a minimum cycling distance, so she covered a lot of the distance on ships, riding at places where she stopped along the way. Following Alexandria, she made her way to Jerusalem. Throughout her trip, Annie visited many great countries and cities, including Yemen, Colombo, Singapore, Saigon, Hong Kong, and Shanghai. Londonderry was an excellent storyteller and self-promoter. These skills allowed her to attract huge media attention during the trip, meaning earning the $5,000 minimum was easily within her power. Throughout her journey, she made claims about her mysterious past, which made people even more intrigued with her journey. These claims included that she was an orphan, an accountant, an affluent heiress, a Harvard medical student, and the niece of a senator. One of her more bizarre stories was that she had invented a new form of stenography. Although this was untrue, or exaggerations, it was all part of her business plan. Because of this, she managed to successfully cultivate her controversial celebrity status. All of this gave her the opportunity to capitalize her journey. Throughout her trip, she arranged paid appearances and even sold photographs of herself to fans. Furthermore, her status led to companies paying for advertising space on her bike and person. These included ribbons and signs for all kinds of products, ranging from perfume to bottled water and bicycle tires. Finally, on the 9th of December, 1895, Londonderry set sail 
from Yokohama, Japan, making her way to the States, finally arriving in San Francisco two weeks later. After this, she rode to Los Angeles. She soon left California and made her way through Arizona and New Mexico, finally reaching Denver, Colorado on the 12th of August. While cycling through Colorado, she was almost killed by a runaway horse and wagon. Fortunately, she was able to avoid a direct impact and only came away with minor injuries. When traveling through the US, she told reporters of her thrilling adventure. They were fascinated by her stories of near misses, her encounters with vicious tigers while hunting with German royalty, and her imprisonment during the First Sino-Japanese War. The final leg of her trip made her pass through the states of Wyoming, Nebraska, and Iowa. Unfortunately, while cycling near the small village of Ladbrook in Iowa, she crashed into a herd of pigs and broke her wrist. After this, while in Clinton, Iowa, Londonderry met two other cyclists. Together, they made their way to Chicago, finally arriving on September 12, 1895. She had now completed her journey around the globe, and with 14 days to spare. She claimed her $10,000 award, and then made her way back home to Boston. The following month, Londonderry moved her family to New York City. Working as a journalist, she started to write about her journey. At the start of her newspaper article, she wrote, I am a journalist and a new woman. If that term means that I believe, I can do anything that any man can do. After her accounts were published, the newspaper New York World wrote a piece on her with the headline, The Most Extraordinary Journey Ever Undertaken by a Woman. Not too long after documenting the account of her journey, she retired from journalism and focused on raising her family. Despite her international fame, she was soon forgotten by the media. Annie Kopchowski passed away on the 11th of November 1947 at the age of 77. Thank you everyone for listening to this video on Annie Londonderry. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a like and a comment down below if you're new. Why not subscribe? If you have any recommendations, please send me an email, which is in my description. That's all from me. I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Lives. Thanks.